let me just tell you a little bit, you know, about this video that I saw. So, so basically it said, to your point with like who you give your energy to, right? You know, so that day that when we are gone, you have the front row people. The focus should be on the front row people. A lot of times though, that front row could have a lot of stress associated with it. It's this family, these family ties. They know yeah. you since you're a kid. Maybe there's some limited beliefs that might get you rattled or something. But the, the people in the front row, those are the ones that are always gonna be there for you regardless. So your front row is gonna be your kids, your wife, your brother, mom, dad, like there's the whole front row. The front row energy, they're gonna be the last ones to leave. So we gotta make sure who we're giving our energy to. Um, it's a really accurate description of life because there are people that only are around for what they can benefit from you. And then there's people like your family, it doesn't matter. Like right, my kids, my mom, my dad, whoever it is, I could be mad at them or I could have a bad moment, but they love me no matter what and I adore them no matter what. Yep. So. Guys, before we get started, just want to let you know, if you have any questions for us, please click the link below. You could ask us any questions via email, and we'll get back to you by the end of the episode. All right, guys. Episode 27 this week. I got my good friend Pete Riley here with me. We're going to kick it old school and just uh, have some uh, a little bit of a bro session. Just me and Petey kicking it around and uh, talking about our feelings. Should be a good one. 100%, man. So what do you got, Petey? You know, back where we started, man. Well, uh, dude, last night I was at a wake um, for such an amazing soul, Joe Marino. Uh, he was in a fight with, with cancer for a year. Um, he's, he's just one of those guys that, like, his spirit and his energy just, like, just makes you feel good, like, yeah. at all times. Um, so Zach's wife, Steph, um, her street, Joe Marino and his family grew up on. So we'd be around them all the time, like, since high school. And uh, he, he just had this way about him where he would, like, always remember different, like, unique things about you and, you know, really just took time, like, for, for everybody else to, like, make them feel good. And, you know, when I was talking to Zach, I remember, like, at, like, the tail end of my drinking career, like, I was really feeling like a loser all the time, you know what I mean? I felt like I was letting myself down, letting my family down, just, you know, making bad choices and, like... At the tail end of that career, like, Joe would, like, still make me feel good. And I'm like... You needed that light. Like, no, I don't. Like, I'm not doing good. I'm doing awful right now. How are you, how are you finding... And he would, like, find these ways to just, like, still still make people feel good. So um, what, what, what really resonated with me last night was his daughter got up. And, and she spoke in front of everybody. And, you know, that takes immense courage as, as it is. Um, she's probably, like, she's probably mid-30s. Um, so she got up there on the mic, and the way she was describing Joe, I almost felt like she was talking to me. Like, I was in—the place was really crowded, so I was in the hallway, so I could hear her through, but I couldn't see her. But the way she was describing her father, I felt like she was describing me. Like, she's like, my dad wasn't afraid of his emotions. Like, yeah. he would cry, you know, and— um, he was super supportive of them and, you know, believed in them. And she's an awesome, she was an awesome lacrosse player. And she read this letter that she sent and she had some jokes in there. She's like, even though I was only 20 minutes away, I read, I wrote my dad this letter. Um, and, and the letter was really about like her love for lacrosse wasn't like for her, like it, her love for lacrosse was like all her time with her dad. Yeah. Um, so what I started thinking about is like, holy shit, man, like there's going to be a day where I'm not going to be here and maybe my kids have to get up there in front of everybody and like what kind of things are they going to say, you know? And a lot of the things that she mentioned about him, like we're already currently doing that right now, yeah. you know? So like our kids are young, um, but just between the giving the hugs, the support, you know, I was at Mason's school today and... You know, it, it gets so stressful a lot of times and, you know, it gets so overwhelming and the screams, like even this morning was a little bit crazy. We went and saw Abby at school briefly, like her window's there. So Mason's school is right by. So we just like, I thought it'd be cool to just roll up. In, yeah. Well, it had like an adverse thing on her because like all she kept saying is mommy. So she was like crying and screaming and everything for a while. Um, she got calm, you know, she went into school and everything and it was fine. But like my point is, even in those crazy moments, like this role that we have as dad, like, it is so special, dude. And, like, it is such a blessing. Yeah. And as long as we just, it's not, we're, we're not going to be perfect, but as long as we are, you know, doing our best, giving our best, giving this love, um, you know, having this two-way street. So <clears throat> I sent Alex a video uh, the other day, and she shared it with her mom and her brother. And so when I went up and, and hugged them, um, 
they said like, thank you so much for the video. Um, but then when I talked to Alex's mom, like I gave her a hug and she's like, I was like, I was so special what, you know, what Alex said, like, it's such a blessing. And she's like, uh, just take notes from Joe. And I said, you know, I have been, I have been this whole time that yeah. I, that I've been a dad. Like I, I have been taking notes and, you know, um, uh, but now, Alex's think- brother Joe, you know, said like my dad really loved you a lot, and I said, yeah, you know, I I felt the love, and you know, I I was, and uh, not to cut you off, no, but no, no. you know, she gave me a hug, and she pretty much said, you know, follow his lead. But but one of the things that while she was hugging me, she said, if you could be there for these kids all the time, you're gonna keep them out of trouble. They don't have any other choice. Yeah, the support is there, the love is there. There's almost a fear associated, and I felt that when I was young. Like, my parents were so supportive that I feared getting in trouble. Yeah. I feared hanging out with the wrong kids. You didn't want to they, didn't, they weren't, like, necessarily telling me. Like, I just had this natural radar to, like, yeah. stay away from that. But now, do you think, so, like, the way you're talking about Joe as a parent, and I see how you are as a parent, I see how I'm becoming as a parent. Do you think any of that has to do with some adversity we've both maybe faced earlier in life as dads, like you with your seizure or mm-hmm. me with what I went through last June? Like, I know, yeah. because I know for me, facing something like that, a life altering situation, whether it was what I went through or what you went through, it puts shit in perspective. Yeah. Because, bro, my six year old ain't getting up there to give a speech about me, not at six. So I need to stick around and I need mm. those moments and I need to last. We're at baseball practice last night and bro, this kid can't, he could not hit a ball from the, now his first at bat, he did great. His second at bat, he just, I don't know, he was in La La Land, it was cold, whatever. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't even foul a ball, nothing. I didn't care. He ran the bases hard when they told him to run it out. I called him over. I said, Max, I'm so proud of you, there bro. You like way to go. And it's, being in that moment for me is what's important because I know ultimately that's the time I get with him. If we're home, he's going to want to be on his iPad or outside riding his bike, which yeah. I can ride bikes with him, but he's going to want to be with his friends and I don't want to embarrass him. But I get that special time with him or my girls when they're cheerleading or whatever. And I realized last night like how special it is. And I say that to say this. I also realized last night during that moment that there are times that I'm giving way too much of my energy to people that are not deserving of it at that moment. Yeah. And you got to take a step back and appreciate what you have and you can't sacrifice your mental well-being or your time with your family for somebody else that maybe doesn't appreciate it in that exact moment because you're not going to get that time back, whether it's me and Max or you and Mace or me and Ro or you and Ro. Yeah. You know, it's just we need that time. Yeah. Well, you know, that kind of reminds me um, of another video that I saw, not to stay on the same same topic of death, but, you know, when I was talking to Zach, um, I was We have to get him on because he's... Especially lately, me and him have been talking a lot about life in general. And, bro, he's just so level-headed all the time. Like, I have ups and downs. You have ups and downs. Obviously, yeah, we, exactly. collect, we connect that on that. Yeah, that thermostat at 69, bro, 70, like, bro. Zzz. I know. And you Which, don't know. You see 69, 70, but that doesn't always mean that that's where well, his mind is at, no, you know? Duck on, and the, duck on the water, you know? You're, yeah. you're churning a mile a minute underneath. Yeah. But he does it really well, and he finds a really good balance of, like, listen, me, I get, I can get real aggressive real fast. That's just who I am. I'm kind of like a fucking animal. Yeah. Zach is real dialed in on being even keeled, collect all the information, assess the situation. Me, I act on emotion. I'm a very emotional person. Yeah, well, you and I, um, let me just tell you a little bit, of, 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 you know, about this video that I saw. So, so basically it said... Uh, to your point with like who you give your energy to, right? You know, so that day that when when we are gone, you have the front you have the front row people, okay? The focus should be on the front row people, okay? The ones who are at the front row, a lot of times though, that front row could have a lot of stress associated with it. It's this family, these family ties. They know yeah. you since you're a kid. Maybe there's some limited beliefs. Maybe there's these questions that that might get you rattled or something. But the, the people in the front row, those are the ones that are always going to be there for you regardless. So your front row is going to be your kids, your wife, your brother, 
you know, cousins, loved ones, mom, dad, like there's, there's, there, there's the whole front row. And then this video was explaining that, that the, the back area, how quickly the conversations will change at a wake. So it goes from, Hey, let's talk about so-and-so for a little while. And then before you know it, they're looking at their clock. Hey, where are we going to get drinks? Yeah. You know, so that's the back row, the back row energy, the front row energy. They're going to be the last ones to leave. So we got to make sure who we're giving our energy to. And if we're giving too much time to the back row, then maybe we're missing out on the front row a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's a really accurate description of life because there are people that only are around for what they could benefit from you. Yeah. And then there's people like your family. It doesn't matter. Like, right. listen, me and my brother have been to war repeatedly with each other. You guys have that dynamic, though. Yeah, but it's always been that way since we're little kids. Right. But I also know since we're little kids that I will go to war for him three times as hard. Yeah. And I know that he will go to war for me three times as yeah. hard. Like, that's that's my fucking guy. I know. My kids, my mom, my dad, whoever it is, I could be mad at them or I could have a bad moment. Mm -hmm. But they love me no matter what. Yep. And I adore them no matter what. Yep. So you're right. That back row has to take a little bit of a back seat. You know, and yesterday I had a great day. I left work at uh, like 1230 um, to go to the gym. I met Matt Trost and Lex Knapp, two guests uh, at Leaks. And we, bro, we fucking got it hard. That's what they were saying. And by the end of the day, Matt is talking about running a marathon. And like, we were all up. And they might not be in my front row. But they are people deserving of my time That's because it. they bring that right energy and balance. Yeah. You know, it's not all negative. And if there's a negative, we're looking for a positive spin to put mm -hmm. on it, which is kind of why we're at the gym, right? Right. I go there to fight my fucking, my emotions and my demons. Yeah. And everybody else, like Maddie's kind of doing the same, you know, you've said it, you get sweaty, feel better. But like I said, they might not be in my front row, but they can be in my extended front row right now. For and sure. I feel good about that, For but, sure. you know, it's perspective. No, definitely. So, you know, you were talking about Zach being, you know, so, um, you know, even keeled and everything. He He's still a savage, you oh, know what yeah. I mean? So he's still a savage, oh, yeah. but he's been getting it. He's been getting it at, at the gym. So he's got that release there. So he's not taking that trickle down yeah, on you guys too. at work and, you know, his family and, you know, some of these other things. So he's getting it out there, but... You know, he's, he's still a monster deep down, yeah. you know? And I think that, um, you know, I was telling you and Ev how some words circulated about some different things that were, you know, being said. And, you know, you got really, really pissed. But there's actually a lot of courage and respect that others can have when there are some either bad words or, you know, bad things that are going on and, and you don't have that crazy reaction. Like yeah. Harnessing that monster is is more powerful than letting the monster go. And I was talking to Danny Saba recently. He told me a story um, about something that he just gone through recently. And um, uh, everything worked out. It was, it was just fine for him. But, you know, he's like, you know what? Next time that I have something like that go down... I'm just going to, I'm just going to handle it a little bit better. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's what it's all about. Like, you know, when we're in these moments, it's easy to have that big old so, reaction. Yeah. But for but, me, like what you're talking about, I've always maintained. And especially when I was drinking, I'm really protective of people I care about. So like you could shit on me right. and I'll be all right. I know. I will never let somebody shit on you. Right. And the minute they do, if I'm there, I'm checking them. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the outcome is. Punch me in the face. They can take me away in a stretcher. I fight for my people. Mm -hmm. If I care about you, that is unconditional, unwavering support. And the truth is I've really only been one taught one way to respond since I'm a little kid, and that's fight. Mm -hmm. And... I will defend you with every bit of me. Right. So like, yeah, a lot of emotional growth at this point because you were like, no. Mm -hmm. And I didn't pick up the phone and, and call somebody and I'm not anticipating when I see that person to check them. I might just ignore them. I might just walk away. I might just hit them with a, hey. Yeah. Uh, you know, but. Yeah, there's, there's, there's ways to navigate without it essentially leading to conversation. 100%. Or, you know, and at the end of the day, it's all about the kids anyway. Like yeah. if I was showing up 
for the parents, I would have been out a long time ago. Yeah. You know? But I show up there for the kids. And as long as the kids continue to come and show me support, um, then I'm going to continue to do exactly what I do no matter no matter what. And I finally know the value that I'm bringing to these kids. And I'm, I'm not going to teeter from that. Because if I, if I start teetering from my original... Uh, plan and outlook on how I handle the yeah. relationships and the kids to everything. It's not going to feel natural. Yeah. They're not going to, you know, if I'm if I'm faking it, then they're going to feel the trickle down that you know I'm faking it. So I'm going to stay true to who I am and I'm going to keep it real for for who I am. Where you should do the same, like stay true to who you are. That's a great quality to have. That you get this like not in your stomach. Yeah, but I got to harness fuck your it, people, right? Like yeah. I got to harness that because yeah. I'm 39 with three kids. Yeah, I can't be. I mean. and I, There's I a mean, lot on the line. Yeah, you we can't. got a we got a decent business in town. We have a great reputation. Yeah. Uh, what am I gonna do? Be fighting in the street here? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I'd be a jerk off if I you did know, that. The cops but, all know you. I mean, we were yeah. just at the we were just at the PBA event. Yeah, and, it's stupid. You know what are you gonna do? But you know, so. like talking about who you are. I'm at Little League last night and I'm talking to a couple of the parents and uh, I met this guy Jonathan who was a wrestler in North Carolina he grew oh, cool. up so we were talking about Max and wrestling and I said you know he's been around my boy Pete for a long time he's the best blah 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 he said you know it sucks though he just added a Tuesday night practice I said so we'll leave baseball and go to Tuesday night with Pete I said but just for an extra day in the rotation I didn't know he was adding it we signed up at Triumph I said now we're done there because I got Pete I said you know he's like for especially for my son, you've been such a ray of light in a in a sport that you generally can chew a kid up and spit them out if you're the wrong type of coach. You may every kid in that room loves you. Well, I was uh, thank you by the way, but I was um, talking to the kids, you know, recently about you know going through storms and giving them a little bit of perspective on what things looked like for me and like how much wrestling struggle there was like even down to the point that you know I wasn't even sure if I was going to even ever wrestle again yeah. you know that when well, you uh, quit your junior year yeah yeah you know so we had the Asbury Park Press yeah. back then so literally dude we were supposed to have a tournament you know, I quit on I think a Friday. Uh, I was super close to like one nineteen. I think that was that was the weight that I was I was going at the time, and I think I started about one thirty five or something. So, you know, I kind of made my way down. I was right yeah. there. Um, you know, just said I'm done. But my but my point was like, I think that I have this unique approach with the kids because I know what it feels like yeah. to freaking hate the sport. Like, I, 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 like I've been there. And you're and, not trying to mask it or hide it either. No. You know that the sport. Is aggressive. Like, same with life. Right. I see all these guys on, on TikTok or Instagram, whatever, making these videos. And, like, it's real cool to talk about, like, not letting life fuck you up. But you're sitting here telling me not to let life fuck me up. You're not telling me when life fucked you up and you mm. pushed through. Mm. So I know, like, I've been down and out. I've picked myself up with the help of people around me. And I've gotten back to it. So, like, that's, you know, that's one of the things you guys got to understand. Like, you're not talking to two guys who have had life on easy street. <laughs> I've been down and out a few times. Petey's been down and out a few times. Like, you pick yourself up. You fucking persevere. You find shit that works for you. And, you know, it doesn't have to be with substance abuse. It doesn't have to be with mental health. It could be you lost your job. You Whatever it is. Yeah, you whatever know, it is specific to you. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times, too, people have a hard time sharing what they're going through because they think that whatever voice in the background is going to kind of downplay it. Yeah. It's like, no. Whatever no that moment you. is right now, whether it's a breakup, a lost yeah. job, a lost love, like, it's it, it's a... It's, it's a vague area of whatever it is that's that's affecting you, but it doesn't mean that all because it's not like a terrible death yeah. or something that that doesn't mean it's not affecting you in a negative manner, you know. And it's just kind of like getting to the point that you could find these solutions to help you navigate things a little yeah. bit better, and you know, just no to keep you around what, for another day. No matter what your individual struggle is, let's uh, let's say you stubbed your toe and it's really just eating you alive. Cool, I didn't stub my toe, but I have some coping techniques that I've picked mm -hmm. up along the way to deal with whatever issues I got. Maybe you right. could benefit from some of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm willing to talk to anybody because I've been there. Yeah. I, you know, sh shit eats me alive all the time. Stuff is eating me up today. It's just how we get through it. I know. I know. So the reason I didn't meet you guys at Leaks yesterday was because I signed up for the wrong... Um, I signed up for the wrong book fair for Mason's class, you know, so I ended up audible. Today, right? Yeah, I ended up audible into today. But while you guys were at Leaks, 
I ran like just over eight miles at like a 748 pace. So my plan for next weekend is I just want to finish 13.1. I just just want that for myself. But um, military Mike, Marine Mike, Mikey Corley, he was asking me like, what's my goal? And I was like, well, my first goal is to just finish and like not walk. But my next goal is to kind of be under eight. So where I went on the run, I went over the overpass again. And I saw the overpass two years later, the same bridge that I was crying on, thinking about my loved ones, thinking about climbing up and jumping down when shit got so rough for me. And, you know, it's, it's real mental, you know, these runs and, uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. Then you add, but that's a, running is a mental thing anyway. You got to push yourself through. Now you add that element, which is bad memories or scary times. That amps it up a little bit, bro, like, so, big time. For you to face that is, is yeah, huge. Yeah, it was cool. It, it was fucking cool for me yesterday, yeah. dude. So so basically, I I ran over the bridge twice. You know, the the, the first time I, I went over, it was only about a mile and a half from my house. The next time, and then I ran down to, like, Route 70 and Brick or whatever and turned back around. So the next time I ran over, it was 6.5 miles in. You know, so different energy. Yeah. The first time I kind of ramp it up, but the second time, like once I I saw the bridge, maybe maybe my view is what point eight away, a mile away. Like I I don't know, you know. But you start either way, it. when I saw it, I was like, all right, all right, you know. So it's elevated on both sides. Um, so I just I ran over this son of a bitch smiling, dude. And I'm six and a half in. My legs are hurting. My ankles are hurting. You know, and it just kind of like. And I started talking out loud. Like, I am so grateful that I'm still here. Like, thank you, God, for keeping me on this planet. Thank you. I, I don't think I was all that serious that day, but I was obviously having negative-ass thoughts. Yeah. So that I, I, I ran over once again, and I was kind of like smiling, talking about my family, talking about everything I'm grateful for, and I was like, I'm here. I'm still here. Like, no matter what is going on in yeah. my life, like, I still get to live. That so, is such a blessing. And you're so lucky to be able to practice that, right? So, yeah. like, listen, I don't I don't run, but I do thoroughly enjoy driving. Right, so I So, like, I got my little race car, as Max calls it, and he'll always ask me to bring it home. And two days ago, he says to me, Dad, you haven't brought home the race car. I said, Max, it hasn't been nice out. Mm. He said, can you bring it home to go to baseball? I said, bet. So, for me, I clear my mind at a high rate of speed with music really loud. And, like... Because I'm not going through anything in particular, but life is always stress for me. Yeah, I'm sure. I put on No Easy Way Out from the Rocky soundtrack, and I am fucking getting it on my way home. We had in the car. Max loves No Easy Way Out, by the way. Awesome. So he said, Dad, put, put No Easy Way Out back on. I was like, cool. We drove nice and slowly. I had my son and Mike in the car, and he jammed out music all the way up to No Easy Way Out. But for me, that's my outlet, right? So, like... I'm stressed a little bit. I'm not running. It's just, I'm not a runner. It's not happening. Which is what we talk about. Yeah, you know? it's what it just doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. I just don't like it. It's gonna make me more stressed. Mm. But like, I have an outlet in music, and you can genuinely tell my mood by what music I'm listening to. Right. So like, if I'm having a real shitty day, I'll put on like Papa Roach, Last Resort. I'm oh, not. Oh God! I, like I'm not Suffocation. suicidal at, no at that moment. But like, going hard. Like. It's just that hard edge music, right. or like if I'm feeling really good, I'll put on uh, like Whitney Houston, dance with somebody, and I'll dance okay. with my girls and my son yeah. in the kitchen. And you know, because I told you we cook and listen to music, mm-hmm. so music you could tell yeah. where I'm at, yeah. And for you, like running, you could sense your mood when right. you saw that you know, that bridge coming up, you mm-hmm. felt yourself getting worked up and getting after it, you know. It's how, however, however, you got to respond, but. One thing I've also come cognizant of, I don't need to place so much value or emphasis on being successful. Success is in my house. Mm. Success is my kids loving me. Mm. Success is, you know, being able to be there and be a father. So, like, I need to take time not away from work. That's not what I'm saying. But I need to put, when I get home from work, it's my family. There's no more work. And... I'm so glad because, dude, 27 weeks later, dude, we were saying, like, and, and like, I saw your phone ring last week. Your phone just rang now. You're probably going to have, like, five missed calls yeah, by the time you get I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm good But my point was, when we first started, we were talking about, like, the disconnect with the phone and whatnot. Yeah. 
And, you know, to hear you 27 weeks later saying, hey, you know, I have to disconnect. Yeah. Like, it's not sustainable. Like, you, the, the, the hard truth for you and I is, like, we know how it could go. Yeah. Like, you could be back in the hospital. Yeah. And I could be back in the fucking hospital. Well, that's it's the thing. Not, it's, it's sustainable to a point, right? And the point is, when I get home, the phone is down. That's it. We're good. So, like, it could be all about work, all about the stress. Mm. But when I get home... It's done. Good. And I'm taking Max to War at the Shore this weekend. Yay. We're going to see Johnny Ryan's son. Yeah. And uh, and Jack Jack wrestle. Who came up to me? I'm, I'm going to check my phone all weekend. I'm going to put it on the side. You know, obviously I'll answer for my mom, but I'm not going to pay attention to my work emails. None of it. It's just going to be me and my boy hanging out with my friend and his sons and enjoying the weekend. Yeah. Um, so Patrick Buco was at practice. He's he he just had his first season coaching with the Rebels. He's a he was a stud wrestler from North Jersey, like a four time place winner. He moved down here. I think he lives in Manalpin, but he he came into practice with his son. He can't, and he ended up staying for the Tots group with his son Lucas, who's only four. And then Lucas just chilled. And then he came in and helped me. But Johnny Ryan's kid was scrapping and everything. He comes up to me. He goes, "Yo, that kid's a stud, right? Bro, like, yeah, yeah, he's a stud. He's a stud." JP like hasn't you know? had any like real official coaching. Like, right? He's just running on pure heart. And Athleticism, yeah, I mean, it's wild. Yeah, it's been amazing to see. And, you know, just to have Johnny in there and, you know, all these people keep coming up to me. Evan was actually there um, on Sunday. But, you know, uh, all these people keep coming up to me that are like Howell Townies. Yeah. You know, and, but, I mean, Johnny's driving from freaking Barnegat. I'm trying know, to get to Johnny to move back up here right now. Yeah. Um, but he's, you know, he's making the trip. There's a lot of, like, local Howell families that have been in Howell yeah. just like we have or, you know, you're in Freehold, like, in this area, uh, listen, you know, I'm for a Howell, long time that I'm are I'm in back. Howell 15 years now. No, I'm saying, like, uh, Tim Turner. Yeah. You know, he he came up in Howell. His wife, Erica, she came up in Howell. Johnny came up in Howell. He's back in. You know, a lot of the Freehold yeah. peeps are coming in. So, yeah, you're, you're definitely, and, and I mean, dude, the Howell Freehold border. Yeah. Like, uh, yesterday I was over, I was over in Freehold. Where the heck did I go? Oh, a Clayton McGurr. So I passed Big Rod's house in Farmingdale, and I was like, dang, man, you can get to Freehold so quick yeah. from Farmingdale. I, I never, you know, because, like, back when we were in high school, like, I grew up in Howell. Then, like, you go to Freehold Township, you know the Howell people, but you don't really know. So you kind of, like, have, like, this Freehold, yeah. this, you know, a certain type of thing. But I liked growing up in Howell and going to Free. Like, I would have loved to go to Howell, too. But I love the fact that we got a chance to meet other you kids, you know? To new kids, yeah. new, new lifestyle. Yeah, it was cool. You know, listen, I was on the opposite end. I grew right. up in Freehold. Actually, I had two different perspectives. I grew up in Freehold, went to public school through Freehold. Right. I went to Red Bank Catholic to play baseball where I met Nick. Right. From there, I blew my shoulder out. I finished at Freehold Township again. So now I met a whole new quality of life or type of life at RBC, kids from Rumson, Middletown, wherever, all walks of life. Now I'm back at Freehold. I got all the kids I grew up with that I'm friends with, and now I get to get exposed to all the Howell kids, Yeah. which... So like for me that was cool because I've always that is cool. I've always prided myself on being really diverse with my friends group and uh, being able to assimilate with all walks of life. So like that shaped me at you know 15, 16, 17 years old, and I'm sure similar for you. For sure. Yeah, you know it's it's perspective too. You know because I still talk to a lot of those people today, and some of them have struggles. Some of them pretend they don't. Mm. Everybody's in a struggle. Some people pretend to not acknowledge it, but like a lot of people that think they're in really bad shape in life, I see them just on the cusp of greatness and preparing to win because you're acknowledging your shortcomings. Like, you know, a couple of years ago, I was fucking nobody. I mean, I made a decent paycheck, but like I never stepped out of my comfort zone. Mm. Then I was able to realize like I can do some things and I, you know, I connect with you and. I have some avenues that maybe can help you and you get linked up for, for RWC at the PAL and yeah. whatever it is, you know, yeah. and it, it makes me happy to be able to pass that on to you. So like I found what works for me, but you're deserving and worthy of my time, energy and resources as I am hopefully of your time, energy and resources. Oh, hundred percent, man. Um, so two things. Number one, back to Danny Saba. You know, he's, he's coming on soon, right? Yeah. And, and big like, fish. He's been through a lot 
between owning his own business, the stress and, you know, uh, having all these properties, like all yeah. this stuff. And like, he just continues to grow. We were on the phone for about 20 minutes yesterday, but he said, dude, the next time that you're feeling stressed, like take some deep breaths, stay in it. Don't call somebody. And I was like, you know what, dude, that's such a good point because Evan and I were talking about, and this is my second point, but uh, Evan and I were talking about like praying out loud and like not having another voice. So if I'm stressed about something, right, and I call you, of course you're going to defend me. And it's almost going to yeah. fuel shit. Like I'm going to be like, Billy, do you believe this motherfucker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And it like amplifies everything. Yeah. He's like, dude, next time. So and I didn't have any situation that I said like, hey, this just pissed yeah. me off. But he was kind of just airing out loud some of the stuff that he'll do. And whether it's a phone call, an email, he's got all these people hit him up 24-7. Yeah. He's like, yeah, dude, what I've been doing is, and it's okay not to respond to, which is like, I, I had a hard time with that for a long time. I'm getting a little bit better, but. Yeah. They don't need this instant response because sometimes that instant response, it, it might it, it might not be really how you feel. So it's like, stay in it. Take a few deep breaths. Let's, let 10, 15 minutes go by. Yeah. Get yourself back to, to, to normal or even keeled and then respond. So I was like, dang, dude, like that's, that's great advice because a lot of times when things would happen in my life, I would be so quickly to share it with somebody else and – Maybe even whoever I was sharing it with wasn't really giving me the answers that yeah. I thought that I I, I, I kind of needed. But, you know, anyway, so um, the four-minute prayer plunge twice a day, it gets pretty specific, um, pretty similar all the time. But my point is I've been adding – I have I added the modern man, you know, weeks ago. But as of late, I started uh, I started also adding in Sergeant Hill. You know, so he kind of came, he came into the mix. Coach Morris from Johnson and Wales came in the mix. Coach Rich Ramularo who started. So it's pretty much, you know, um, thank you for another day on this yeah. earth. Thank you for these beautiful blessings. My wife, Abigail, my three amazing children, the roof over our heads, food in our belly, clothes on our back. And then it gets kind of like right into like Bobby Walsh, Peter Berryman, Oleg, all these people who saw something in me specific to mortgages yeah. that I never saw they in myself. Saw through you, through yeah. what you saw. Yep, and then it's like, thank you for all the opportunities that continue to come my way. Like, I'm so grateful for those. I don't take them for granted. Yeah. I think at one point, I did take them for granted. Whether I just assumed they were always going to come or whether I just thought um, it was always going to be like this. It's like, easy to feel that way, Just grateful. Though. Thank you, everybody. Like, I was yeah. always grateful, but, like, thank you for those people day one who gave me an opportunity to close a loan when I was a bartender. Yeah. I mean, there's a family, they live close to me, Mike Nevis. I, I would tell them all the time, I'm studying for this test, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, dude, you're our guy. I'm like, I'm your guy. I can't even get these freaking tests right. I'm not even my yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm How not even my guy. guy. How about your guy? Yeah. Exactly. You know, so uh, really like a, 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 there's a lot of gratitude there. Um, the gratitude to the wrestling community, how I personally started, Coach Morris got me involved, the Howell Wrestling Community, and the Wrestling Club. Mike Hires' name comes up a lot. Mike, Mike Hires, such been, a solid been dude. Great. He's, I tried getting him in today last he was, second. Uh, so I'm outside with Max. Our mayor was painting something, and I see a truck coming on the block. It's beeping the horn. He's so close he, to you, too, yeah. his house. He pulls up. He puts it down the window. He goes, yo, it's higher. And it's Mike and Chase. And uh, we sat there. We bullshitted for like 15 minutes. Yeah. I didn't realize he rides motocross. I know. I had no idea. So He's was, got the wall rat sticker on his bike, on yeah, his motorcycle. I had no clue. Yeah. So I was kind of shocked. And, you know, Max is into dirt bikes. I mean, our old house had three acres of property. So he was riding a PW50 from the time he's four. Yeah. Now he's got a couple quads he rides too. But um, Max thought that was really cool that Coach Mike is riding dirt bikes at English Town and like riding motocross. He's gonna be one of our. He's gonna be one of my favorite guests when he does come on. I I, I asked if maybe at some point in April we can get him in. Yeah, I'm um, I'm so good with his that. his dad perspective is crazy. Did you see the video he shared on 365 yeah. Medium? And uh, like I've been going through it a little bit like that with Mason, where I feel like our relationship is looks different now than it once did. And um, last night he asked me for these V bucks again. Yeah. And uh, you know it was like twenty five bucks. You know, and he also asked me for a controller. So I'm like, I'm like, dude, you know I love you. And he's like, we're talking about money and how how much things cost and different things. He's asking me these questions, and he's like, is twenty dollars a lot? I'm like, it it, it depends. Like. If you make $20 an hour and you work 40 hours a week, 
like, yeah, 20 is, is, is a decent amount. Yeah. I'm like, you know, certain things at certain times, but I'm like, I will always get things for you guys before I do for myself. But I'm like, we got to get a deal going here. I'm like, we got to have catch for seven days straight and I'll buy you a controller and I'll get you more V bucks, even though I just got them yesterday. And he's like rolling his eyes. like, Oh, he like turns over. I'm like, dude, I'm not asking yeah. you for much. Like, I want to get back to where we were at, man. Yeah. Like, I love him. Like, what? You don't like playing catch anymore now that you got Fortnite? You know, but Mike put up this video, and Mike has such a great perspective on being a parent, and his kids are slightly older than ours, so he's starting yeah. to see, like, Chase is about to be in seventh grade. Like, Chase is about to be in high school. Chase going to have his driver's license before you know yeah. it. Like, he's really, we get to he has a lot of awareness. What he goes through. Which is great. We get exposed to that, so, like. I know. I don't want to say he's the guinea pig, but yeah. he's kind of laying a foundation for us because I don't really have any friends that have, you know, 12, 15-year-old kids. Yeah. I don't, you know, so I'll get to see what he goes through and maybe prepare myself a little bit. I'll get to see what you go through with Mace and prepare myself a little bit. Yeah, for sure. He has immense perspective on everything, and he actually lost both of his parents. Yeah. So his awareness for, like— how how uh, short life could be, how precious life is, and this this epic gift that we have yeah. to be parents. Like he does not take it for granted, and he stays very like very open with me. Like I, I thank him all the time for coming into and my life. And he's super humble. Like yeah, he could you know you try to give him credit. Like oh, Mike's always at yeah. at RWC. You don't even want to take it. He's like oh, what are you talking about? Well, it, like he's just so passe about it. Like not like he just it's normal for him. Well, he was saying to me, you know, in that same topic on Sunday night that he says it's it's human nature to want to feel a part of something. So Agreed. for him coming in, setting up the mats, like it's just habit for him now. But I'm like, it's more than just being a part of something, Mike. Like you have been one of these people who has actually gotten me to see my gift. Yeah. And like you've been a huge part of it. Like we're getting linked up with Wrestling Driving IQ right force. now. Yeah, like we're getting linked up with Wrestling IQ. We're going to have this whole automated registration and everything going on. And like, I wouldn't have done that. Like, uh, one of the parents was was talking to me about how I used to handle people trying to pay me back in the day. Yeah. And I would just be like, nah, it's fine. And it's like, no, nah, dude, it's not fine, bro. It's Gotta not fine. Paid. Like, yeah. Um, not that I need to get paid, but like, I, I, remember, I remember saying, no, but like, I, remember I have sitting, a job. Like, I, I just love this shit. Impact trying to take attendance for you. Yeah, I remember that too. <laughs> on a fucking, on like scratch paper. I was just always nervous that if I gave time and energy to that stuff, then I wouldn't give the time and energy that I have. But when you have people like Mike that could literally come yeah. in and even like you trying to, trying to take attendance, different things. It allows me to continue to do what I do yeah. best. I don't do best at that shit, yeah. which is fine. I'm getting you do there. Pretty well I'm at coaching, right. though. So focus that's on the that, thing, man. That's where I need, I need to stay there, and and that and, and that's what I think parents and stuff don't understand. Like, if I start giving that attention to you during practice right now in this moment. I'm, I'm, I'm missing out on the attention. So it's almost like you giving the attention to people who don't deserve your attention. Yeah. Not that the parents don't deserve my attention. So it's not a direct correlation. No, but but they're, you're there they're, for the now kids, the kids right don't now. get it. Yeah. yeah. Now, so if you're giving it to somebody, your kids don't get it. Yeah. You know? Um, and But that's the big thing for me, right? So I've said it. I, I try to take on other people's shit because I can't, I feel that I can't fix my own shit. You're fixing your shit. Well, though. that's what I was going to say. You made a point when I said that to you off camera. Maybe I made the decision last night I think you did. to take that stance because in these 27 weeks, 27, 28, what is it? This one's 27. In these 27 weeks, I've actually maybe helped myself. You have. And maybe I don't have such a big void to fill anymore. Don't, get a, don't make a mistake. I'm willing to help everybody, but you got to be willing to help yourself too. Mm. I can't be the only one fighting for you because I'm not going to fight with you. I'm going to fight for you, but you have to be willing to fight for yourself. So I don't have that big void that I got to chase people down that don't want to help themselves now. Anymore. Yeah. Which I is amazing. Like you said, Pete, maybe, just maybe, I've made some fucking progress. You 100%. Yeah, have. so I'm proud of myself. I you sit here today. Be. I'm proud of myself. I'm not uh, I'm not as aggressive. I'm not as stressed. Still stressed, still aggressive, where's, but not as. Where's the stress, though? Like, what's still lingering? Because I mean, listen, maybe it's, it's have, some real, maybe it's some, some real 
shit that is nah, never going to be eliminated. No, nah, like, I mean, it's it's work stress. I mean, it's never yeah. going to be eliminated. But, you know, we've gotten so big and we grew so fast. And we grew when other people were not. Right. During COVID, we did the majority of our growth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we got a big payroll. I got big headaches, big bills. You know, I've put some pieces in that have helped me and Michael manage uh, things a lot better. You know, we have Zach there who's a huge help. Uh, Emily does If it wasn't for Emily, I would miss every appointment in my life. I'm sure. I'm just so focused on certain things that I feel, whether it's, uh, you know, an appointment with Lex Knapp to go over insurance or an an appointment with a doctor, whatever it is. Right. It's always going to take a a back seat to whatever. Emily keeps me on on track at work. My wife keeps me on track. Yeah. But- that stress is never going to go away. Well, that's the I'm thing. just managing it better. That's I, what I was going to say. Bro, when COVID first hit, it was right after Christmas, I got COVID. I was so addicted to work. I would wake up in the morning, get in my truck, drive to certified, and I would sit in the fucking parking lot for an hour just to observe and see what was going on. Just the fact that you could even say that out loud is That's how fucked up I, I am. That's not fucked up, though. I, like it, I was addicted to work and that's just that's all me and michael that's real knew. dude that's yeah. real and the the fact that you you have that awareness to know that you could still find success whatever success looks like to you you could continue to pay the bills and it, it does it ha- it could be on your terms and i've yeah. actually really gotten there with the mortgage stuff like yeah, I, I don't know what's been going too. on lately but i used to get fucking rattled yeah. like my my clients wouldn't feel it but every conversation would hit my stomach Good ones, bad ones, like deadlines, dates, blah, blah, blah. And I actually said to my processor the other day, I'm like, it's going to be fine. I said the same thing to to, uh, Gina earlier. Uh, Gina's my secretary, and she's been such a blessing to me. And she's like, you know, worried about this, worried about that. And I'm like, Gina, it's going to work out. Oh, you know what it was? The the system, you know, that we we have, like, shut down. And she's like, well, I'm not going to be able to get this in. I'm like, there's more to life. Like, yeah, where you, you you have your life, I got my life. the The system's gonna kick back up, yeah. and this thing's gonna close, we're gonna and we're gonna it. be fine. Um, but you know I who think was the that- first person to present that perspective to me was my brother Michael. Yeah, probably like a year ago. And not that anything was majorly wrong, but I'm scrambling. I'm stressed. It was Bill. Yeah, relax. Yeah, it's gonna work out. It it's always gonna. does. We figure it out. And he was right. You know, they, what did, you say it. You worry about 90% of the, 90% of the stuff you worry about never happens. Yeah. So I'm sitting here like chicken little, the sky is falling. Mm. And he's like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Just Listen, relax. Billy, that stuff is not sustainable for long-term life on earth. Either. Yeah. Like <laughs> stress kills, bro. Yeah. Like, I get it. You know what I, I mean? It. So like, I'm, I'm glad, like I, so throughout that prayer, like I, I'm also saying thank you for putting seizures in front of me, uh, overwhelmingness, depression, anxiety, like thank you for all that. And it's almost the same thing with you. Like, thank you for putting you in the hospital yeah, because you if you to. didn't go in the hospital, you'd probably be on a similar trajectory with like the stress yeah, and 100%. everything else. You'd Nothing would have changed. Levels. I would have never so listened to So that's what I mean, dude. These down moments, I know we talk about similar stuff, but like these down moments, these hard times, like they force you to like make these changes. Yeah. And like that's been, and what I was saying is, just saying these things out loud. And when I first started the prayer plunge, I was on video. And like, I don't even do the video anymore. Frankie Edgar kind of like put up a post. He's like, anybody who's taking videos, I was like, all right, yeah, Frankie Edgar don't think it's cool. I'm not going to do it. But that, but, but, but even, even if I get on camera and I, and I post it, like, I don't want a reaction. I'm doing this for me. Yeah. Like, I don't need anyone to see what it's I'm your doing. Form I, of I was healing. doing it like, I was almost putting it out there like, hey, I was super overwhelmed, depressed, anxious, a fucking hot mess express, like my sister says. I was the hot mess express, and th- and this got me good. And even when I get in there, I'm like, ah, thank you for another plunge. Yeah. Thank you for letting me find this for myself. So that's why we were talking about the running and, like, what that does for me. Um, it, do- it does, like, a lot of good. I have to monitor the miles and different things, like, to be sustainable. So I took two days off. Oh, oh, you know what? I did a five mile in the rain on Saturday. 
And my dumb ass went 602 the first mile because I'm surrounded by other runners. And now we got puddles, it's raining. It's not off pavement like I'm used to. So it was Bro. a mental challenge for me. Even though it's only five and I've had five plenty of times, it wasn't that, dude. It was the mud. It was my shoes were wet. It was raining, but it was a challenge. So I saw a video, another video last night that said, the more that you do things that challenge your mind, the more that, they, I don't know the name he said but there's one part of your brain that actually grows that science is starting to realize that the more that part of your brain grows science says that life longevity comes with that so there's a lot of different ways it doesn't have to be a run and you know they even talked about the plunge and I'm at the point now where I do four minutes twice a day but I'm looking forward to it yeah. they said do shit that you don't look forward to so I'm like fuck do I have to ramp it up Yeah. do I gotta go six now? Yeah. But, but it was a challenge when I went from three to four it was a challenge I bet. now four has gotten easy same thing with running when I first started with the running, you know, I came out of the gate firing with this 5K. I was sore for days. I didn't run again. When I started running consistently, the runs got easier. Yeah. You know, the, the 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 four minutes got easier. You know, what whatever it is, the 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 weight that you thought was heavy, 225, got easier. Yeah. You know, and, okay, so now you add a little bit more weight. And that part of your brain can continue to grow in all those challenges. I stayed very limited to challenging myself. I would do some things here and there, but now yeah, I want to do a full. Yourself. I want to do twenty six point two. I want to do twenty six point twenty two by the end of the year. And before we started shooting, I know how hard it is to get into the uh, New York Marathon. And I was telling you and Ev, like, I don't need a bib. I don't need a number. You just need to do it. I don't need comp you score to tell me my time. I just need for me. A, a, another challenge. This 13.1, yeah. I like the preparation though. 13.1 has been on the calendar. I was like, shit, I'm a little bit tired at eight. Do I got another five? And I shared my time with Mikey and Mikey goes, you got another five at that pace. So I was like, all right, Mikey kind of gave me a little bit of confidence. So that was 748 was my mile time. So I'm like, I don't know if I got that, but you know, maybe a decent amount. Yeah, but you're pushing but yourself. Either way, pushing it. Yeah. And I don't need it for anybody else. I need it for me. And that reminded me of, uh, I went for a run around Spring Lake um, a few weeks ago. And when I did the Spring Lake five mile, it was 10 days after my seizure. And I had half a tooth. And I was saying all this crazy shit. I was voicing out how I was feeling. One of my loved ones told Abby that I should go to like a loony bin. I don't know who it was yeah, yet. Yeah, you know what? You were, but, at that point, you were probably, don't take this the wrong way, so fucked up on your own. Like, yeah, I was. Just processing what just happened. Your whole world came crashing down. Mm -hmm. Did people expect you to stand up and be like, yeah, yeah this, what is, this is, is fucking awesome. my shit off yeah, and get back in the mix? This is like, so great. I I, I'm missing a fucking tooth. Yeah. I just ate shit in front of my kids. Right. This is the best. I know. What did they expect to happen? I know. You had to be in a dark place. I had to had, go through it. It had to happen. It did. And you went through it so that today you get to enjoy and feel... Everything you're feeling that's positive right now would be meaningless if it wasn't for a struggle. You're right. So, like, you get to enjoy it and embrace it. Yeah. You know, you're running over that bridge. Yeah. Whatever it is, you get to enjoy running over that bridge because you know how fucking dark it was on that fucking bridge. Exactly. So I was back in Spring Lake, and I was thinking about my energy, and I, I, I've talked about this day, but uh, leading up to that day, the Spring Lake 5 Mile, it's my favorite it's my favorite race of the year. It's my like, like one of my favorite. Like, I look the one forward Nate to it. Randomly saw you at. That's the one I saw Nate at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so that day, I, I've discussed it that day with Nate. But leading up to that, there was a lot of uncertainty on whether or not I should go, and uh, which was fine. It was warranted, and I was very uncertain if I if it was even necessary. Yeah. Like, why do I fucking need? And you know, the night before, I was talking with Abby, I was talking with my parents, and I just said, you know what, guys. I'm going and I need this. Like, I just, I just need this for myself. Like, I don't care about the time. I don't, I, I, I just, I, I, I just feel like I need, yeah. I need a fucking win. I need, I need to accomplish something and, and, and find my fucking stride again. And, um, you know, so that was the night before. So then Con, I had no license. So Conrad drove me there and I, 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 I'm pretty sure I talked about this, but it all came back to me when I was back in Spring Lake, just like the bridge came back to me. I was, I, I, I did five over there. 
And, you know, I did five. I felt good. But I, I had, like, deja vu from when Conrad was telling me that, like, I was very quiet the whole way. I was nervous. And then when he, like, right before he dropped me off, I saw an ambulance. Then I started having flashbacks of, like, 10 days prior. And then I started thinking about my kids and the stuff that they were saying. And I was just like, fuck, dude. Yeah. And then, sure enough, Big Rod shows up on his mountain bike. He goes, you fucking love this shit. And I was just like, I do love this shit. It takes and one that fucking it. person. It takes one person, One dude. person. And not, to, not to, to change topics a little bit, but, like, yesterday we're at the gym. And Robbie's got us, we wind up on the bench with 185 pounds, nothing crazy, but we're coming down to a stall, stopping and pausing two mm. seconds and up. Now you got no momentum. By the third set, mm. at eight reps, you fucking start getting tired. Definitely. You know, it gets heavy after like six on the third set. Definitely. So now I'm cheering for Matt and Lex, yeah. and they're cheering for me. So like that one person, you could be in a room full of negative, mm. but one person says, let's fucking go, you got it? Bro, it changed your whole mood. You Change always, your whole mood. dude, you have such good energy like that. Like with the golf, I talk about all the time. You just started golfing, yet you find ways to give pointers. You tried I can to teach give you me how a to pointer. suck less. Hey, listen, you tried to give me a pointer with the boxing. I gave you some backsided energy because my boxing shit sucks. And so I just I. know that. Um, but when I did those box jumps that day, if you weren't there, I would not have fucking done it. Like, uh, I just would have just been like, hey, I don't need this freaking whatever the hell it was. Uh, close. You got another call coming in. Yeah, not whatever. even phase. Um, and, 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 dude, my watch is dead, by the way, which is good because I'm not seeing anything going on on my yeah, phone. Yeah, but look at the Last growth. Week look it was at popping. that growth, though. Look at that yeah. growth. Yeah. I'm not touching my phone. I barely looked at it. It could sit there and ring. You're not worried about your watch being off. My yeah. phone's sitting there. That's it. Bro, we're kind of we're kind of making some moment. fucking progress. We're sitting here enjoying each other, you know, and enjoying just bouncing shit off of each other. And I'll tell you what, mm. I enjoyed the twenty minute conversation I had with Tom yeah, and Ev always. before you got here. Always, Ev hit me with some shit before. So it was good. I came in late. Yeah, it was good. You were late, <laughs> then you yelled at me at school. <laughs> Ev hit me with some stuff. Uh, sixty minutes. A, what is it? Sixty minutes a week yeah. in a sauna will reduce sixty percent. Of all cause mortalities. All cause mortalities. Now think about that. Sixty minutes. In a week. That's in a week. It. You have so much time. You can't carve out. So where's 10 minutes the one a day? at the house, bro? bro? This is usually Billy's usually. I'm surprised you didn't order it once he said that. So this is I back said, to the mountain bike. No, no. I yeah. said I've been looking at saunas. They're probably expensive. You're gonna go basement or garage with it. Uh, either outdoor or basement. And there's there's cheaper alternatives. I was just talking to another, I, I know a lot of Coach Mike's, but I was talking to another Coach Mike who's got one at his house, not to downplay 1900, but compared to what you probably saw, 1900. Bro, I'm looking at ones that are six, seven, eight. Yeah, dude. You can get you can get the same job. I don't done know where you find those ones. Price. After we get out of here, I'll, I'll text yeah, Mike. Yeah, because I. will send me the link. I mean, if you go through. Uh, my Instagram feed, it's all sauna companies. Because I've, I've been looking at saunas for probably two months. Damn. I can't find one that, like, I mean, I don't want one that just I fit in that's this big. Yeah, a little like, claustrophobia, the one yeah. they got, the one with the head sticking out. Yeah, yeah. no good for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wouldn't, yeah. I want to sit on a bench. You get something decent. Maybe my wife comes in. Maybe you come over with Ev. We sit in there. We hang yeah, out. Yeah, dude, we you talk. need a double seater, bro. Yeah, like, it's it's like eight grand. Yeah, it's deep. Yeah, that's deep. And, I mean, is that is that? Does he have any other options? Uh, you gotta drop eight on yeah, this thing. Yeah, I could go to Thrive. Oh, That's my other option. Sell the mountain bike to him. It's a steal. That remind me. Bro, that just reminded me. John Riley, you need to talk to John Riley. He was Riley. building one, wasn't he? Is he is Mr. Handyman Special. That dude came to my house and literally did mad projects to the point that I almost didn't go, or I, I ended up doing a Zoom link uh, NCAA wrestling draft. I didn't want to go, and I kept telling you I don't want to just leave yeah. the house. I, I left. I've been gone since November. I'm not leaving. I'm not going. Sorry. You know, so I was, like, telling him I didn't want to go, and Abby's like, that dude did so much at this house. Like, if he wants you to go, I'm like... It's not John's thing, but yeah. I, I get it. But my point was, dude, John, John's got the research, dude. He's, well, he was he, building he, a sauna. That's what I mean, if I wasn't mistaken. You yeah. should talk to him, and then I'll talk to Mike, and we'll see if we can get I, you. That's I not eight. Definitely grand. want a sauna. Yeah, 
I was Especially if you at, know those benefits. Well, and I love the sauna. Like yeah. we go to Thrive. I could sit and sit in the sauna all day. Yeah, I was just saying one the I other day. I thoroughly enjoy that. Yeah. Cold plunge, we're getting friendlier. You know, I do the shower. I, I've been soaking in. I, I don't know how cold the bath is at its coldest, but it's probably like 50 degrees, 45. I'll get in a bath, cold water, no ice. Yeah. And I could do that. We're I getting, think they say the real benefit is between 45 and 52 degrees. Anything yeah, less like than it's 45. Not, it's not this freezer burn that no, I'm in. But, like, but that's what I'm saying. So, like, I got comfortable in. That, you know, 50-ish degree water. That's fine. I'm good with it. I'm working on it. Maybe I'll be able to get in that 30, high 30s at some point, but... You know, if, if we if we had two different boards set up, like, uh, uh, what is that, like an art uh, easel or something? Yeah. With the, you know, if, 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 if you had a board and I had a board, and Ev asked us to draw our piece on each board... Our piece is going to look different. Yeah, of course. So my piece is in the plunge. My piece is in the runs. You don't, you're not down with either one of those, but you're finding other way. Your picture looks well, different, am, but at least but you're aware of where your, your piece is. I'm I'm good with the plunge. You got I'm not sauna good. on your piece. You got I'm, you got your BMX bike on your piece. 100%. You have you have your vehicle. Bro, I ain't even trying to speed, dude. You put me out a hundo with loud yeah. music, I'm bugging. I used to get so paranoid in the car with like Zach used to drive no, like see, a maniac when we were kids. That stuff bugs me out. You're not stupid. No, I am stupid. No, but I I'm am. saying there's different there our, our piece looks different. Yeah, but my piece in the car is a little bit different. Like, if it's just me That's and I'm getting it, chaos, dude. yeah, bro. Because you know, not for nothing. You're in control, though. Like, I mean, I'll uh, I'll put a disclaimer out here for any law enforcement that are listening. This hypotheticals, but if I'm doing a hundred, so if you I'm be doing hundred forty in the car, and something happens, there ain't much of a chance for me to walk away from that. So, like, yeah, it's cool and it's a release to maybe Honestly. have that tunnel vision coming down the parkway in and out of traffic, racing somebody or just driving. But what, what the fuck happens? I, I hit a tree. I hit a guard. What, 104, it's over. It's over. So how that realistically? That scares me, dog. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I'm much better off. You just send your ass to Six Flags if you want some speed. Yeah, it's but damn shoulder I'm not in on. control at that point. Dino, and it's I like, you. you know, it's that rush of being on the cusp of going out of control, Fuck. you know? Yeah. I live for that. No, and, and not so much anymore, but especially in my younger days yeah. before I had kids. Yeah. You know, my wife had to check me. We go down to Mount Laurel. We see my boy Hanzo, who's a, a tattoo artist. I linked up with him through Nate. And he does a piece for me. And uh, my wife was there to get something for the kids. We're on our way home. Kid in Hellcat, Durango, wanted to get it, and we're getting it up the park, up the turnpike, coming back from Mount Laurel, and she fucking lost it. And she was in the car? She's just like, we have three kids, we're both in the car. She's right. Now, but this is a woman who, pre-kids... Oh, she would have been was, like, beat this We woman. were fucking racing like everywhere. Yeah, it's different And, now. Uh, you know, it puts it in perspective, but, like, the car, now the music is peaceful, not so much... High rates of speed. And today, high rates of speed is like 80 for me. Where go. it used to be 130, 140. Yeah. Um, not safe, not sustainable. That's another thing. Like, these kids are such immense blessings. And uh, I was thinking about my dad as you were talking. My dad was involved with this motorcycle accident when he was young. To the point that his foot was like literally like he describes it like hanging on threads like next to him. So he's got like these gnarly scars going up both sides of his leg, like old school freaking surgery. But he never got back on the bike. I would. And then either. when he would, when my sister was in like preschool or something, like my dad was ripping Marbreds at the time on the job sites, and my sister came home and said, "Dad, if you keep smoking, you're gonna die." My man put that shit down for life. Hasn't had one more. Put down the motorcycle. Put down the speed. So the like if we don't the have these these little if we don't have these little hidden blessings, we're gonna keep ramping it up, dude. Now we're just finding other ways because like yeah. the way you described the vehicle, that's how I would feel bombing hills on skateboards. Yeah, and it's just like it's just as dangerous it was my too. Shit, by the dude. way, I mean you fucking. Well, yeah, but just like you, like you have experience, so it's not necessarily yeah. dangerous for you. It'd be dangerous as shit for me. Yeah. I have fucking, I don't think I go over 80 on the parkway. Yeah. But, you know, the skateboard I didn't feel was too dangerous for me because me I had so trouble. many reps. Yeah, I knew how trouble. to dive roll out. I knew how to carve. Yeah. Like, it, yeah, it, it was dangerous. It, 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 
and, and, and that was the thing. Like, all the outsiders were scared as shit. Yeah. But you know what, dude? When when Mason was born, I used to bomb the bridge to get to Headliner, the 35 bridge yeah. um, from Belmar into where it like, drops down into yeah. Neptune. And uh, shit, man, Mason was a freaking little baby. Abby said, no more, no more bridge. She was uh, scared for a while, but she let me live. Once Mason was around, I was like, all right, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I love it, See, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll get off the board. It's stuff like that we have to be cognizant, right? Like I used to ride motorcycles and uh, I got off a bike and I'll never get back on one. I'll have the itch all the time. I always say I want to buy a Tom's? bike. No, that's Danny's. That's yeah, Danny's selling it for his daughter. But like even that, I saw it. I was like, maybe I'll buy the bike. It just in my mind, it sounds great, but I'll never get back on a bike. It doesn't matter. You hit, you go down on a bike at forty, bro. It's gonna hurt. There ain't nothing around you. You're getting rashed up, or God forbid, you hit something at forty. You got a problem. Yeah. You got a real fucking problem. Yeah. At least the car, you got something around you. I never had that. I'm glad because I'm a wild, I'm a wild ass cat. I'm so yeah. glad nothing ever pulled me. I'm glad nothing ever pulled me to get on a motorcycle, and nothing ever pulled me for hard drugs. Yeah. Well, you know what? They're probably very similar. You know, uh, going fast is very addictive. Ricky very Bobby. I bet, dude. Yeah, I mean, will you get? And you're such looking a, for that same rush again yeah. next time. And we. We said it last time with Ronnie. If you're looking for an answer, you're going to find it. Whether it's the right answer or the wrong answer. You you mash a pedal in a car, especially a fast car. It throws you back in your seat. You feel it in your stomach. You're fucking boogieing. There's no feeling like that. Yeah. It's such a rush. And you know it could kill you. You know that you're doing something wrong. You're looking for cops, whatever it is. There's no feeling like that, though. You know, and... You just got to be smart enough to know it's, it's like many things in life. It it's not fucking sustainable. Bro, you can find that shit in the sauna, bro. Well, you can find like, it in a cold plunge. Yeah, that's why yeah, I said that, it. That's what I mean. It, yeah. it might not be on my board to do 38 degrees for four minutes. Yeah, our boards look different anyway. Right now, I can bang out 50 degrees if that's what the bathtub is. Boom. Uh, you know, cold water, which I believe I'm accurate on that. Probably. Um, 50 degrees, I could do for three minutes. Dude, did I show you what I did when we went to to, to Great Wolf Lodge with no. the bath? No? I thought I sent you to picture with the plunges. I know you told plunges. me that you uh, were bringing ice in. You? No. Yeah, dude. So basically the way our hotel room was, there was literally an ice machine like right across the hall. Like we, You cleared right that across thing the hall. out. Yeah, well, it was one of those those big old commercial joints. So I just kept going. So um, yeah, dude, I, I, I filled it up with cold water and I took the hotel... Hotel ice bucket, or no, the hotel garbage can I was using with their. So I freaking boom, 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 dumping it in, dumping it in. They had to be watching you on camera like this. They guy probably is were. They probably, crazy. they probably thought I was having a party in there. Um, and, and a lot of people at Wawa when I get ice think I'm partying. Yeah, They're like nah, man. I Cold point, hung baby. That shit up years ago, man. Yeah. Um, different, different kind of party now. There's been so so many instances like like as you were talking, I was just like thinking back to like all these times and like you know what a gainer is like when you run yeah, forward and do a backflip. Well, we used to do those off of Big Rod's roof. I've heard, and they were high. Like his house is freaking high as hell, and it, you know. And I was always mad nervous about it, but Zach made that shit look real easy. <laughs> So Zach, then, does, Zach doesn't make anything yeah, work hard. So yeah, so then I started doing them and I started ripping them, and then uh, Zach's cousin literally like almost hit the coping of the pool, and I was climbing out the window to get back to get back on because we had to climb out the window, go up to the roof. Dude, this roof is fucking high, dude. It was a big ass three story home. I, I don't know the dimensions, but yeah, you got to be talking enough. what forty foot or so. Big enough, you know. And another phone call. <laughs> So that's got to be at least five, by the way. There's so, a lot of text messages too, but we're I saw good. those. Too. Usually, <laughs> I saw those usually too. I'll sit here and that was answer them under week, the table. Dude, I was kind of, but you I know, know what? I, today I, I, I'm sitting here. I'm yeah. pretty clear. I'm good. No, good. Yeah, Maddie Charles was talking, and I looked down yeah. a few times. But um, anyway, so uh, Zach's cousin, you know, he he was a big, tall baseball player. You oh, know, I met him. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, you know, so he did. Um, you know, he did one of the gainers, and he landed. And, like, as he came down, he was fine, but he just missed the coping. He just missed 
everything. Like we could have cleared this yeah. pool, landed on the side. Like it, 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 that's one one could've thing. Went poorly, many yeah. many things, and a lot of me escaping death was probably with Zach too. But <laughs> you know, um, there were so many other times in colleges and whatnot. But but uh, basically, Zach and I were were climbing out the window at the time. We were super scared for Dave because we're seeing it from the top, thinking yeah, like it's about it's to go over, down. Yeah. He lands safely, boom. And we're still maniac, drunk, mid mid twenties, and we kind of look at each other and we're just like back down. And we went back down into the bathroom, went walked down back down by the pool, and we said, "That's it, we're done with those." Yeah. At least you guys done realized it. <laughs> at least you realized it. I know. It. You know, and listen, everybody's got moments like that. Listen, I shared some stories about me and my cousin Mark the other day with you on the phone. You know, there's a lot of things that could have went the other way. That I wouldn't be sitting here, maybe, or I wouldn't be sitting here the same person. Yeah. So you got to take everything you face, everything you realize you're blessed to have come out of stronger, and just channel it to be a good person. Try to smile, but more importantly, enjoy being in the moment. That's, you know, that's, that's been my biggest takeaway yeah. in 27 weeks. Got to enjoy being in the moment because, like... I could sit at baseball practice or football practice or wrestling or even just sitting at home riding bikes with my kids because I got this beautiful BMX bike. <laughs> and I could I could be I stressed. I just picture you jumping curves. Bro, I love it. <laughs> I could be stressed. But, like, last week, we took the dogs for a walk. Max gets on the bike. I get on my bike. We're riding. He stops to say what's up to his boys. They're playing basketball. And I'm just sitting on my bike. And I'm just looking at them. And I'm looking at the boys he's with, and he's talking, he's sitting on his bike. And I just enjoyed being in that moment, watching my son interact, smiling, and being happy. And that's what life is about. 100%. Be in the moment, guys. Yeah. Don't let shit bother you that's uncontrollable, especially that's at it. that time. Being in the moment, dude, it's literally, it's got to be the biggest, uh, there's been mad takeaways, but that's got to be the biggest takeaway. And be in the moment, even if it's not, a good moment yeah. because we know as we talk to Matt Tross and all these other guys we know it's not always going to be good yeah the like, bad moment's going to yeah. not going to last but sit in that for a second but sit there yeah you know good bad whatever it may be that's where i think the 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 stress comes off the anxiety comes off the the worry of the unknowns well, when we know that 90% of it doesn't happen like and if you that's where that stress yourself is enough like you you get in the, the cold plunge enough times, you're going to get used to it. Right. You face adversity enough times and you do it calmly, every time it's going to get easier. Right. So, like, yeah, it sucks, but there's nothing you can do about it right now. Instead of stressing over it the last 10 times you've dealt with it gracefully, you get to deal with it gracefully going forward because that's now become your pattern and your habit. Yeah, ain't that the truth. So, like, I'm stressed, Pete's stressed, Ev's stressed, but, like, I'm enjoying you don't look the moment. At this guy doing nah, that Ev, honestly, I feel, like Ev, I feel like Ev doesn't have a care in the world. He's just happy go lucky, enjoying life. Yeah, but he's he's real similar to me in a lot of different ways. Like he could be going through it, but he doesn't yeah. make he doesn't like bring that energy on on other people. And like when nah, he he's were, always smiling. Yeah, I know. He's I, always I love that. I love that. But, but he's his but, smile but, like yours is also contagious. Yeah, but but that's back to like positive Pete not always feeling all that positive. Like when I was smiling, you know, we talk they about me smiling the all the time, people. but when I was smiling a lot, I was really hurting yeah. too. Like they say so, the happiest people are battling the most sometimes, yeah. you know. And yeah, Robin Williams has had a lot of, yeah. a lot of really good stuff that and, have come up about you know, that. Listen, I don't smile a lot, but I battle shit <laughs> you know, all day. But if I was really hurting, you'd probably see me making jokes and trying to lighten the mood a little bit so you didn't see me hurting. But I've gotten really comfortable with, with stress. Dude, uh, this guy's going to cry on camera in no time. <laughs> and he's smiling. Damn. We're smiling. We're moments away from tears. So let's mm -hmm. let's let's hope that's a long way off. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not ready to cry on camera yet, <laughs> but one day, one day, keep staying tuned, guys. You might get some bro, tears happy from Billy. Tears, bro. Tears are tears. You know. Um, uh, I don't Sad cry movies, much. The I commercial did. with the animals. Right. I'll give you guys a real vulnerable moment. Here we go. So I had to put a dog down that mm. had really bad neurological issues. And I mean, I spent a ton of money on vet bills in the 10 months we had her. I remember that. They wanted to bring her a U-Pen. I couldn't get an appointment. I was willing to do that. The vet says, listen, 
the dog is beyond help. You have mm. to put the dog to sleep. We put the dog to sleep. I sat on the floor with her for like 40 minutes at the vet. We go home, fast forward like three or four days. I come downstairs, my wife is watching a movie about a dog whose owner died, but the dog would go to the train station every way, every day to wait for the owner to get off the fucking train. Mm. I cried for a half an hour. I, I don't know what it was, but like it was the first time Max saw me crying. He's like, Daddy. What's going on? Are you okay? And I was like, Yeah, it's, I got something in my eye. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> and, uh, but I sat and I cried like a little girl for 30 minutes. So, like, I'm vulnerable. I'll cry. Not often, but usually it's sad shit like that that'll get me going. So you guys will get some tears soon. The animal commercials looking for donations, bro. Yeah, bro, that Good stuff hits me, man. You, bro. That bet. stuff hits me. I have more sympathy for animals than I do humans because animals don't get a choice. Right, right, you know, right, like right. Uh, I, get that. I got these two dogs at home. If I choose not to feed them and I choose to abuse them, they didn't ask to be in my house. I chose to bring them there, kind of yeah. like kids. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so You're right. You know, child abuse and animals, uh, I don't stand for. Yeah, so. All right. I think we, we're good. Yeah, dog. should we end on child abuse? Uh, <laughs> we, you know, Can you give us a positive note to end on here? Yeah. I mean, always. But, you know, I was at I was at Mason's school today. You know, we were at the book yeah. fair. And, uh, you know, Mayor's I went doing in. doing Easter and, egg hunt right now, I just remember. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I talked about how I used to get super rattled going to, because my job is very flexible. And, like, flexibility could also lead to, like, not getting tasked on and like that lingers over my head yeah. or like emails, like all these things. It's like build up and like festering and shit. So, you know, I went there, you know, I was so happy to see my boy, you know, I selfishly, I was there with the PTO. I was helping, I guess you could say I was helping. Uh, I ended up leaving early, you know, I just like bounced. My phone was like blowing up. Yeah. I was there, but I was there for a solid hour and a half. Um, but I was like almost... Like, I was super glad that I got to be there with Mason. But again, like, that doctor's appointment, that or the dentist appointment that I handled well, like, I handled it well again today. Yeah. So I was like, holy shit, man. Like, when I get out of there, I was like, nice, you handled that well. And, you know, my secretary, Gina, was hitting me with a lot of emails. I was going back and forth a little bit. I was on my phone. But I didn't have, like, an epic knot in yeah, my stomach. And I didn't feel like, I, I, I don't know. I didn't feel like that self that self-pity of, like, you chose this yeah. over that or like you put your clients on the back burner or like yeah. anything else like that. Like I was, I was cool. Uh, the morning was a little bit overwhelming. So once I got out of his school, I went in the plunge that got me feeling right. I hit the weights and then I came over here. Um, but yeah, I was, just, I was, I was proud of myself and I'm like, so I was telling you on the phone, like, dude, I'm so grateful for that shit. Like yeah. you should be super grateful that you get to go to the school that, that Mary yeah. is, is a stay at home mom. She gets to be there. Dude, we can't get these moments back. Yeah. Bro. No, I agree. Can't get these moments back and back to what, what we started at with Joe Marino. Our kids are going to be on that microphone one day. Yep. It's, it's, up to, it's up to us what they're going to talk about. Yeah. Are they going to say, dad was on his phone all the damn time, dad was always pissed off, worried about money, or are they going to say, no, yeah. dad was showing up at the Little League field, dad was here, dad gave me love, yeah. dad gave me kisses, dad always encouraged me, dad always believed in me. Let's, just like we're painting that picture, what I was talking about with like what our piece looks like, let's continue to paint this picture for these kids yeah. to make sure that when our time is up, and they have to get up there in front of everybody else, what are they going to be saying? Yeah. And that's up to us on a daily basis. All right. Let's I don't know end how positive there. that was. but no, it's, it's, a good, it's a good ending. <laughs> All right, thanks. It's a good ending. Plus, my phone's going off. Yeah. Now I'm starting to worry that something's stressed. wrong. But uh, let's end it there. Yeah. Um, as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the support. Like, click, and share. Please click the links. If you guys have any questions, shoot us some messages. Uh, as always, we're available to talk um, if anybody needs anything. Thank you again, guys. We'll talk to you next week. It's a good one. That was a great one, dude.